Hi, um, I'm Deanna. I'm from People Chandelier. And welcome back. Uh, it's right now we're going to go into the hip key or the scissor lock. Um, in a lot of traditional circus programs, you won't get on the silk until you can do certain things like you know, a straight leg straddle up or you know certain um, mark skill marker levels. I teach silks in a different way. I teach it in much in traditionally in a lot of informal settings. Um, I'm more interested in the process being really fun for you and sharing the joy of it, the joy that it's brought to my life with other people. And um, so, uh, if you come back this way, we're going to start with my um, personal hip key training. Uh, so the hip key or the scissor lock, it's it's a very important movement silk. So it's very foundational. And um, although you may find it frustrating in the beginning, I urge you to practice it and stick with it as much as you can. It is so rewarding in, on so many levels. Um, and it's a wonderful rest movement. So the scissor lock as it uh, should appear, you're going to bring up your legs, scissor over, pick up the silk, rolling over, and you come into a complete lock. And you'll see that I've let go. Okay. So that is how it looks when it's done properly. Um, the way that I teach very beginner students is frequently to bring the silk to one side of their body, to step the same leg on the same side in front of the silk, then to reach down and grab the tail of the silk up between their legs, sumo style, and you will bring your outside leg, this is the inside leg next to the silk, this is the outside leg away from the silk, up high, as high as you can. Keep your balance here. Okay, it's important to start working on your balance as well. Um, so keeping it so high that you can let go of the tail and the silk will remain highly draped over your hip. All right, and then you're going to bring both hands on the opposite side of the silk and even getting your elbow over there. So your upper body is already poised to, to roll all your weight into the silk. Okay, that's what the hip key is. It's rolling all of your body weight into this uh, very simple wrap and it becomes a very secure lock for you in the air. So you want to push this live end of the silk down so that it's really almost, you're almost reaching. So you can see, like, I'm almost already in the lock. I just still have my leg on the ground. And when you're at this place, you can really simply just pick up your leg. And you can feel the hip key lock without having to necessarily, you know, I think feeling the lock is really important. Now you can see the tail is kind of down a little bit low. I'm going to use my hands to adjust it so it's either directly over my hips or above them. And you can do that after you're in the lock. When you, when you want to come out, you reach up and gently roll out. Grab with both arms first. Um, to get the lock, it's really essential that you commit all of your weight. Really essential. It's, it's, it's a total commitment to that rolling your hips into the silk and flinging your body weight toward the ground. Very counterintuitive, but You'll, once you do get it, it feels very natural. Um, so just once again, same leg, same side, pulling it up between your legs. Across the opposite hip. And I, you see how I'm, I'm still holding this to my side? And behind me, it's, the silk is like under my butt cheek. And it's important because you want it to, it's a hip key. You want it to come across your hips. Um, Opposite outside leg is going to be high, okay? Um, so high that I can hold, let go of the tail, and it's over there. Both arms coming over, pushing it in, and then commit. It's all about your commitment, okay? And I'm going to adjust my tail. And to tighten it up, you know, you can hug. And to make sure you're committing all your weight, hug that top knee with both hands, okay? And straighten out and push back your bottom leg. It's going to tighten it up. It's going to feel more secure if you do that. Okay. And then grab it with both arms before you roll out. All right? When you're starting to work on it in the air, frequently it's challenging for beginners to do it with straight legs. Okay. But straight legs is definitely the goal. 
work on it as long as you need to. Um, it's really important to have a straight leg so scissor lock or hip key. So once again, entire silk comes to one side of your body. Okay, so you're going to bring your hips up, rotate your bum and your hips toward the silk so you can pick it up high in your legs, straddling large so that it's up in your crotch and then rolling all the way over, committing all of that weight. If you want to bend the top knee and hug it for security, that's excellent. Excellent thing to do. Same thing, you'll be grabbing it with both hands and gently coming out. Okay, and so that was the hip key with the silk on my left side. I'll show you with the silk on my right hand side. So, lifting up, getting your hips up next to the silk. So this first leg, it stays up, it's stationary. The, the outside leg drops down behind. See that? Behind, swoops it up, picks it up, straddle large to get it up in your crotch, and then rolling over to commit your weight. So a lot of my beginner students, when they're first learning with their, their knees, um, I'll just show you quickly what that looks like. You know, <laughs> if you're, um, if you haven't figured out your straight leg hip key, don't be trying to show other people. <laughs> it's really important that you get to a place where you can do it properly before you try to pass this on. Um, but this is what a, a bent knee hip key would look like. Just for your reference if you're a beginner and you're trying to learn. So both knees coming up. Outside knee swoops behind and under. Both knees coming up together and over. Straighten out the bottom leg. Bend the top one, hug your knee. Okay. And that's my uh, hip key demonstration. I hope it was helpful to you. If you're serious about becoming an aerialist, I strongly urge you to take as many classes with as many different teachers as you possibly can. Visit circus schools as many of them as you possibly can. Go to performances, you know, check out what other aerialists are doing, and um, listen to them, you know, different teachers have different techniques, and these videos, although should be highly informative, they're not gonna replace a live teacher, nothing can. Um, I hope you enjoyed this.